Tonight's Soul Knowledge takes a closer look at the frontiers of mid soul development and innovation. This is the Future Craft 4D. It is riddled with complexity and it is truly a sight to behold. Let's get into it. Welcome back to Soul Knowledge, the home of the sneaker story and the home of sports culture insights. I'm your host Bernie Wickham and I am the sneaker evangelist. I keep saying that we live in quite an amazing time because the sneaker industry is such a fiercely competitive industry that you've got big brands that are finding new ways to excite the consumer, new ways to keep pushing the agenda of their athletes forward. And they keep finding ways to just deliver a level of freshness in innovation. And that's what keeps me so excited in what the brands are doing. That's what keeps me interested in all of the major brands, the new stories. The first time I saw the Futurecraft 4D, it was, it was in a photograph and I was mesmerized by just the complexity of that midsole. I looked at it and I thought, what on earth is this? I mean, it looks, it looks amazingly just intricate. When I just read the caption that said, it is a 3D printed midsole, I thought, wow, now that's cool. Now, after getting to understand how this technology actually works, I started to realize that calling it 3D printing kind of underplays what exactly is really going on in the production technique of these midsoles. It's been developed by a company called Carbon, and the production technique is referred to as continuous liquid interface production, also known as CLIP. And this is how it actually works. Traditional 3D printing is a means of printing layer upon layer upon layer. Now, although that may be quite helpful in the overall construct, you also find that there are weaknesses that settle in between these layers. And traditional 3D printing also has a limitation in the kind of materials that can be used in this layering process. That is not the case with the clip technology, and this is why. In clip technology, an image is projected into a vat of liquid. With the use of oxygen and light, that image is not printed, but rather it is grown outside of that vat. This process does not use layering and also can use engineering materials to achieve this construction. What I want you to think about is the movie Terminator 2. The Terminator actually he was not 3D printed, but he was grown out of himself. That's how this was actually made. Now all of a sudden you have a unique midsole that is lightweight, flexible, durable, and has actually been derived from a liquid. With that in mind, Adidas cast its mind to probably one of the most monumental ideas that has been seen in the midsole space. And that is trying to find a way of mass producing this midsole and creating a unique and personalized fit for every single consumer. So imagine this shoe. This is a US 9 that we are having a look at. And imagine two different consumers buying this exact shoe. One of them weighs 50 kilograms and the other weighs 120 kilograms, both in the same size, 9. Now with such a weight delta between the two, this shoe technology could find a way of creating a midsole based on very different and unique needs for those two customers who are still fundamentally interested in the silhouette but in different weight categories. That is the level of personalization that the future craft can deliver and that Adidas wants to eventually envisage for this consumer base. But right now, it has managed to find a way to go to market with the technology as unique as it is to just show off the level of complexity that can be achieved within this midsole. This idea is remarkable. It is an absolute revolution and it is something that I would want to see go to market in such a mass scale. It is beautifully fantastic, riddled with complexity. I just love it so much. What do you think? The product that I have in studio this evening is the Alpha Edge 4D and also the ZX 4000 4D, which have both been made available to sole knowledge by Olympian Akani Simbini, 
who's also South Africa's fastest man. So Akani, a lot of love and thanks for coming through for Soul Knowledge for yet another episode. I was asked a question earlier on in this week about the Adidas ZX series, which I thought I would just share very briefly in Soul Knowledge as we conclude this episode. The question was asked, what does ZX actually stand for within the line of Adidas's um, sneaker line? ZX is not particularly an acronym, but because it was a name given to a range of running shoes within the 80s, it rather delivers a sense of being futuristic. Um, think of the times of the R2D2s, the C3PO's, the ZX Spectrum, all of those things deliver a sense of future. So the acronym doesn't mean anything specific other than giving you a sense of future. Now, this shoe has taken the upper of a typical ZX line of the 80s, but delivers that futuristic midsole piece with Futurecraft 4D in that midsole. So it's kind of a bit of old meets new and probably one of my favorites that I've seen. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the story. I hope you've understood a lot more about what Adidas was trying to achieve in over here. Let me know what your thoughts are. I always look forward to hearing what you guys have got to say on the insight shared within Soul Knowledge. A lot of love.